Father. Let's turn to Acts chapter 10. <coughs> Acts chapter 10, please. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Acts chapter 10. Blessed be the name of the Lord and all that is within us. Bless His holy name. The Holy Spirit has quickened me on something that uh, everyone in this room and everyone in the body of Christ has been hindered by. And uh, the word tells us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? Amen? And knowledge is a representation that represents truth. But knowledge that's not understood is not truth. Everybody get it? Amen. Knowledge that is not understood is not truth. So you can read the Bible and not understand it. That means you don't get free. Amen? But knowledge understood is truth. And truth sets us free. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Because the Spirit represents truth. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. So turn to Acts chapter 10 and verse 36. And would you read it with me, please? Acts chapter 10 and verse 36. Everybody there? Acts chapter 10 and verse 36. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Now, this is very powerful. Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit for a specific purpose here. It says that he was anointed to heal those who were what? Oppressed by the devil. Those who were oppressed by the what? Devil. I want to talk about spiritual oppression. Spiritual oppression is something that, first of all, to be oppressed by the devil is a representation of to be weighed down or heavy. And it's a heavy sense either in the mind or in your spirit or senses. It, 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 it has like an offshoot of worry or fear or troubleness, anxiety, things that relate to that arena. Many people get oppressed by the powers of darkness. And it is a spirit. It is a demon. Sometimes people just think it's something that, oh, I just got up on the wrong side of the bed today. No, you got up on the wrong right side of the bed, but you shook hands with a demon. And that spirit of oppression was right there. And there's many offshoots of the spiritual uh, spirit of oppression. Um, spiritual oppression is to keep someone down or beat them down until the individual is overpowered or subdued. Oppression will manifest something. Oppression manifests deception. There's a manifestation that oppression does. And what oppression does is it manifests deception. Um... What it also does is it puts an individual into spiritual bondage. Amen? And the reason why it manifests deception is because the individual gets so caught up in self, it gets deceived. The devil has an opportunity to bring scales on that individual. So he can't really receive from what God is trying to do. He's hindered by the spirit of oppression. Is everybody with me? Now we know that Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. And what's his power? fear. Amen? His weapon is deception and his power is fear. Well, there's something he's got to do to bring deception, doesn't he? You're going to find that the spirit of oppression is behind almost everything. That's why the Bible tells us that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit to heal those who were oppressed by the devil. Amen? 
He went about doing good and healing those who were oppressed by the devil. How many times have you got a woe is me? How many times have you got, been brought into self? How many times have you thought, Lord, you've forsaken me? Amen? How many times were you brought in deception? Now, deception means it's something you can't see, but somebody else can. Or it wouldn't be deception. Hello? It means you can't see it. That's Satan's greatest weapon. And his power is to bring fear. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 16. <clears throat> Glory. We're going to expose his spirit. Kick his butt. Tell me to get out. Amen. 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 1 Samuel chapter 16. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 14. Everybody there? Would you read it with me? But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. What was this distressing spirit? The spirit of oppression. Doesn't oppression bring distress? Amen? And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp, and it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be what? Well, yeah. Made well. It is a distressing spirit. A distressing spirit, of course, is a representation of a spirit of oppression. It is a demon. that puts a person into a state of being confused, despaired. It results in low self-esteem. Loneliness, and as a self-abuse of spirit, it feels that it can't accomplish anything. It brings a woe is me. It crushes the uh, reception or acceptance of love. It crushes it. Some people have a hard time receiving love, even though they say it. They may say they love you, but they have a hard time receiving love because of an oppressing spirit. And there's something very important that it does. It forbids an individual to get in the presence of the Lord. It forbids an individual to really seek God and to get in His presence. The spirit of oppression. It causes an individual to have high expectations that can't be met. Brings oppression. Is everybody with me? In Psalm 69, would you go there please? Psalm 69. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 69. Glory, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> You're going to get exposed tonight, devil. Psalm 69, in verse 16. Would you read it with me, please? Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies, and do not hide your face from your servant. 
For I am in trouble. I am what? In trouble. Would that be an oppressing spirit? Amen. Hear, hear me speedily. Draw, to, draw near to my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of my enemies. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before you. Reproach has broken my heart. And I am full of what? Heaviness. That's an oppressing spirit, isn't it? Spirit of oppression. I looked for someone to take pity. Hello? I looked for someone to what? Take pity. Mm, let that sink in. But there was none. And for comforters, but I what? Found none. They also gave me gall for my food, and my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Desperation for comfort. Desperation for someone to pity them because of the heaviness of the spiritual oppression. Looks to man instead of to God. Hello? Go to Psalm 119. Glory to God. Psalm 119. We're going right to this. We're not beating around the bush. Hallelujah. We're going right to the root. We're not going to let this thing flourish any more flowers. And bud any more seeds. <laughs> Glory to God. Psalm 119. Verse 25. Heaviness. Would you read it with me? My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, so shall I meditate on your wonderful work. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of what? Lying. And grant me your law graciously. I have chosen a way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimony. O oh Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Wow. Oppression inflicts the soul, which is a representation of the mind, the emotions, and the will. And I share with you, the oppression brings confusion. Amen? And because it is confusion, it, make, it makes things difficult to make correct choices. That's how it affects the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. It brings us to a place sometimes that we want to quit or give up. <coughs> Spirit of oppression. Quit or give up. Spirit of oppression also causes guilt and condemnation. Loves to hand you the bat and tells you to beat yourself up. Told you it's a self abusive spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 12, please. Proverbs chapter 12. Simple, quick teaching. Hallelujah. Going right to the root. Going to go right to the throat. Gladius. Proverbs chapter 12, and I believe it's verse 25. Oh, 
Oh, hallelujah. Would you read it with me? Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Now, this is very powerful. Anxiety. Anxiety is a fruit of oppression. Anxiety is the fruit of oppression. It causes depression, gloomy, low down, heavy burden, false expectations. Can't, can't get to the place of acceptance. Something very powerful it does. It focuses on self-promotion to fulfill a void. Religious is associated with a religious spirit because claims to be religious, but religious individuals are oppressed by the spirit by putting the individual into an intellect state of fulfillment, looking for man's acceptance or approval. Everybody get that? It's associated with a religious spirit, which brings the individual into a, a intellect state of fulfillment. Looking for man's acceptance or approval. <clears throat> but it can't wait or trust God. It promotes self-accomplishment. Is everybody with me? Why? Because of the oppression. It's always trying to come over oppression. It's always trying to come out of this oppression, so it goes out of the oppression in the arena of bringing to self. Remember, the devil always brings you to you. It brings self-promotion. Because of things that it's been oppressed by. So it's always trying to bring a, a self-fulfillment in some way. It associates with familiar spirits. Hello? Hello? And because of the confusion and the deception, is everybody with me? Because of the confusion and the, and the deception in this arena, it promotes pride. And we'll go to that in a minute. It can never be satisfied because it's always looking for fulfillment in the other arena instead of in the presence of God. Remember, I share with you, it constantly hinders an individual from... Even though that you may be in his presence, you can't enter in because of the spirit of oppression. There's a few things I want to discuss. One of the first things is spiritual oppression promotes self-abuse. It's very important to understand it. It only, not only promotes self-abuse, but it promotes abuse of others. In other words, if I can't have it, neither can you. Spiritual oppression promotes self-abuse and abuse of others. If I can't have it, neither can you. The second thing it does is it attacks the mind and the emotion to make rash decisions or hasty decisions. It's a spirit of oppression. Isn't that associated with anxiety? Amen? It says, be anxious for nothing. In all things, prayer and supplication. So the first thing it does is it promotes self-abuse and abuse to others. The second thing it does is it attacks the mind and the emotions 
to make rash decisions or quick decisions. Not able to wait on the Lord. Do you ever sit and talk with someone and they can't stop shaking? I'm always moving something. You know why? Spirit of oppression. They're oppressed. They're fighting to come out of it, but they don't know how. The third thing it does is it causes or rejects the love of self, God, and others. Hallelujah. I hope everybody's taking notes. Causes, it rejects the love of self, God, and others. Of course, you'll know them by their fruit, won't you? You'll be able to tell when that spirit of oppression is hindering you. Go to Isaiah 61. Hallelujah! Starting at verse 1 through 3, would you read it with me? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has what? Anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are what? Bound. Hmm. Does an oppression bring you into bondage? But what did he say? The anointing of God. God has anointed me to what? Break this. Set them free. Remember, I share with you that the spirit of oppression forbids you to get into God's presence. How many people have you known that claim to know Jesus and they still can't worship? They're oppressed. They let their flesh run their life. They let their emotions run their life. And they associate with spirits of familiarity. And self-promotion, self-exaltation. Is everybody with me? You know why? Because they're trying to fulfill something. God warned us about those things, didn't he? <clears throat> Verse 2, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning and a garment of praise for the spirit of what? Heaviness. Hello? And the spirit of what? Heaviness. What do you got to put on? The garment of praise. That they may be called what? Trees of righteousness. Well, something happens then, doesn't it? The planting of the Lord that He may be glorified and not us. Hallelujah. Go to 1 Samuel 19. The fourth thing, the spirit of oppression or spirit of oppression. <clears throat> Hallelujah. First Samuel 19. Hallelujah. Everybody there? First Samuel 19 and verse 9. The fourth thing that the spirit of oppression does is it attacks the anointing of God. In verse 19, now it was told Saul saying, oh, I'm sorry, am I in the right place? Verse 9, I'm sorry. Now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing music with his hand. 
And Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. It will press in spirit. And I share with you that's associated with the spirit of religion, isn't it? It attacks the anointing of God. It is difficult to be submissive and it cannot be come under authority. It uses a person unwillingly. That person doesn't know. That's why it's deception, isn't it? Amen? Spirit of oppression causes sickness to your body. The Bible says that a merry heart is good medicine. Well, what is a miserable heart? Amen. Amen. It says it dries up the bones in your body. That's why people who are oppressed are usually sick. You ever see someone that's always moaning and groaning? Now, under oppression, they're usually sick. Hallelujah. The fifth thing it does, the fifth thing, it brings a sense of false religion. James chapter 1. <clears throat> false religion. James chapter 1. In verse 25. James chapter 1 and verse 25. Would you read it with me? But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty in what? Continues in it. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If any among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religious is what? Useless. Why does it bring a sense of false religion? Because the individual can't bridle the tongue. Always speaking to bring self-exaltation. Why? Because of the spirit of oppression associated with the individual. It causes gossip. Gossip is related to self-exaltation. It says, my flesh is bigger than yours. Hello? The sixth thing it does is promotes pride and indulgence of the flesh. Pride and indulgence of the flesh. Go to Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> does everybody see the correlation with the spirit of oppression? It's basically almost behind everything, isn't it? Why do you think people like to medicate themselves? They're trying to cover up something. Let me share something with you. The spirit of oppression is rooted to offense. The spiritual root of oppression is offense. Somewhere along the line, that individual has been offended, either as a child or as an adult or whatever. How many times has somebody said something to you and it offended you? Didn't the spirit of oppression show up? Who? yeah. But see, dead people don't get offended, right? Like death is a wonderful place. Promotes pride and indulgence of the flesh. Starting at verse 20. Read it with me. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations or traditions of men? 
do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of who? Of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Oh, hallelujah. Indulgence of the flesh. Knowers of the word, but not walkers of the word. Speakers of the word, but not doers of the word. Promotes pride and indulgence of the flesh. It's also associated with anger, jealousy, and murder. It can escalate to that arena. There were, you know, uh, the world, the world call, labels these things as bipolar. ADD or BBC or whatever kind of letter they want to promote it, schizophrenia and everything else. It's called the spirit of oppression. What do they do? They medicate it because they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to cast out a demon. But the body of Christ is hindered with the spirit of oppression because it's very deceptive. Very deceptive. It attacks the emotional realm, which is the soulish realm. People who mourn excessively are oppressed by that spirit. The devil loves to use that spirit to bring us to our past and the things that we've done to bring oppression. What he's doing is trying to direct us in another area instead of keeping focus. He hinders with our focus towards God and towards the will of God. It also promotes laziness. The seventh thing I want to talk about, it seeks attention because of pride and stirs up strife. Proverbs 28. <clears throat> it seeks attention because of pride and stirs up strife. Proverbs 28. Hallelujah. This environment's getting exposed tonight. Proverbs 28, and verse 25. Proverbs 28, and verse 25. Would you read it with me? He who is of a proud heart stirs up strife, but he who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. He who trusts in his own heart is a what? Fool. But whoever walks wisely will be delivered. Delivered. Spirit of oppression is uh, an area where we call false prophecy. Where the Lord says he prophesies out of his own heart instead of out of the spirit. He speaks out of his own heart instead of the spirit. Representation of false prophecy because the word tells us about the dictates of our own heart he follows the dictates of a deceptive heart if an individual has a prideful heart and he begins to speak out of that heart instead of out of the spirit in self-promotion self-exaltation prophesies things that are not from God but from his own emotions Likes, always trying to bring fulfillment. Seeks attention because of pride and stirs up strife. The eighth thing I want to talk about is it separates from the flock. Causes separation from the flock. Psalm 133. Why? Isn't his main objective to prevent you from getting in the presence of God? 
Amen. He knows because if he gets you, if you get in the presence of God and you seek God with all of your heart, he's going to be exposed. Associating with the spirit of sin. Hello? Yes. Because sin is the what? Presence of evil. Transgression is the act. Associating with the spirit is sin, which represents the presence of evil. People think sin is the commitment. No, Jesus said if you think it, you've sinned. Transgression is the act. So as you act upon it, you have marked yourself. Psalm 133. Is everybody there? Yeah. What does it do? It separates you from the flock. <clears throat> Read Psalm 133 with me. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the beard, uh, the head, running down the beard, the beard of Aaron. The oil represents the anointing. Remember, Jesus was anointed to what? Set the captives free who were oppressed by the devil. Running down the edge of his garments, it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the what? Blessing. Life forevermore. Remember, the devil came to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And he does it by the spirit of oppression. Oh, hallelujah. Hmm. Ninth thing I want to talk about what it likes to do is it likes to collect unmerited burdens and cares. It collects unmerited burdens and cares. What are we supposed to do? First Peter chapter 5. Not only does it collect unmerited burdens and cares, but it promotes them. It loves to put them on others also. Remember what the Pharisees and Sadducees were doing? Remember Jesus said, yes, they go out, they like to sit in nice places and dress nicely, but what do they do? They put burdens on you, things that they wouldn't even do themselves. Oh, hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5. God is cleaning house. That's good. Hallelujah. So don't be offended. <laughs> you have a spirit of oppression on you tonight. <laughs> we want to get rid of it, right? Not associate it with it, right? Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 5. <clears throat> and verse 6. What does it say to do? Therefore what? Humble yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your what? Care upon him for what? He cares for you. That's powerful. Cast your care. Why? Because, you know, he's trying to get you to accept his love. But that oppressing spirit prevents you from receiving the love of God. Oh, you can claim it all day long. But the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. People who are bound by fear don't have perfect love. You certainly can't trust what they say because they walk in deception and confusion. They claim to know but don't. They want to know, but they're hindered. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. Amen. It says, resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the whole world. <laughs> In other words, the whole body of Christ is hindered by this. Everybody gets hindered by it. The Bible says that you and I have the anointing, and we know all things in that way we can overcome. Why? If you walk in the Spirit. 
And if you are deceived by it, and you are humbling yourself, and somebody tells you about it, you won't be offended. You'll accept it. So that demon can go. It's amazing how many believers think they can't have a demon. And those are the ones that are loaded. They're walking hotels. The tenth thing it does is promotes self-martyrism. Ooh. Self-martyrism. Jesus said something very profound about this in Matthew 11. Ever talk to anyone who's never positive, always negative, and always goes, "Woe is me! I can't do this. I'm so tired. I'm so sad. I'm so oh, if you were to see how much I had to do, I'm like a hound dog." Verse twenty-eight. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you what? Rest. Rest. Take my yoke upon you and what? Learn from me in the what? Spirit. Learn from me, he says. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. When? When you learn from him. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's amazing how many people's yoke is not easy <laughs> and their burden is heavy <laughs> because of the spirit of oppression. You know, the devil likes to bring us into that position by the spirit of oppression and says, you need to catch up. Because people are oppressed of what they've lost. They're oppressed. The devil tells you, come on, you need to catch this all up now. And what does it do? It promotes anxiety, doesn't it? Does everybody see the connection? Go to Exodus 3. Gladius. Exodus chapter 3. Spiritual oppression. You don't have to hang out with those guys anymore. <laughs> Would you read this with me? Starting at verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he what? Turned aside to look. God called. Isn't that wonderful? See, God waits for you. He called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moses was about to enter a place he'd never had before in his life. In fact, truly were... No man have entered except for maybe Enoch or Adam and Eve at some period of time. Moreover, he said, I am the Lord your God, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the what? 
oppression of my people who are what? In Egypt. Egypt represents the world. The world will oppress you. That's why the Bible says anyone who's a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Why? God isn't their enemy. They're God's enemy. Hello? Is everybody with me? They're the enemy of God. Not God is the enemy. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I have, I have surely seen the oppression of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their what? Sorrows. Spiritual oppression. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to the land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezazites, the uh, Hivites, and the Jezebites, and every other kind of bite and ite. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You know what he's doing? He was bringing them in the enemy's camp. These were not so-called friends. He was bringing them in the enemy's camp, but there's something that Moses, that God had to do with Moses. Bring him in his presence. Come on, Moses. Come on in my presence. I'm going to send my presence with you to free the people from oppression. Isn't that what the devil tries to prevent you to do, is really get in God's presence and worship him with all your heart? Oh, hallelujah. I don't believe people that try to tell me things that aren't worshipers. I know they're not hearing from my dad. No way. It's like saying somebody comes up to you with a bottle of wine and a cigar in their mouth. Hey, the Lord told me to tell you this. Oh, really? <laughs> hallelujah. Moses had to get in the presence of the Lord, didn't he? Not emotionally, but spiritually. In fact, Moses was there 40 days and 40 nights, didn't need nothing. To him it was five minutes. He just had a slight conversation with God, walked out of his presence, it was 40 days later. That's called getting in the Spirit. Psalm 16. Hallelujah. That's why God has to speak to us sometimes in dreams. Or to oppress us, speak to them while we're awake. Forget it. Don't even realize it. Let me tell you, the spirit of oppression is very deceptive. You don't even know you're associating with it. But its major root, the reason why he's there is because of offense. But I have forgiven. That's good you forgave. But if there's still bitterness, anger, any other area, an offshoot, the devil has access through oppression. Psalm 16 and verse 9. Would you sing it with me? Would you speak it with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Therefore my heart is what? Glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, which means hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. What's the devil trying to do? Prevent you from really getting in the presence of God. In his presence is fullness of joy. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Go to James chapter 1. <laughs> glory so you didn't get what you want well praise God just be oppressed you'll be alright 
No, you won't. Because count it all joy when you don't get what you want. Count it all joy when you get offended. Count it all joy when you get rejected. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. My brother, in verse 2, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. Well, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. What? Lacking nothing. The spirit of oppression always wants. Because he's always trying to look for something for fulfillment. And never can be fulfilled nor satisfied. Because he's looking to the world. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Let's close at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Boy, this is a quick, simple teaching. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. The Bible tells us to expose these things, doesn't it? If you feel rebuked tonight, praise God. Repent to get rid of that spirit. And don't be offended. <laughs> you came here to get free, right? Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. Read it with me, please. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Spirit and much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit so that you may become examples to all in Macedonia and Arcasia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord is sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Arcasia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. All praise to God. Joy. Nothing worse than a miserable believer. Amen? If you're miserable, don't tell nobody you know Jesus. Go get rid of that spirit. Have someone to pray for you. Cast it out yourself or get someone to cast it out. Go back to the place where you've been offended. If you can't see it, pray with someone so the Spirit can reveal it. Offense is the open door and spiritual root of the spirit of oppression, which promotes pride and fleshly indulgence. Amen? Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, Master. We thank you for exposing. And Lord, right now, we just take this opportunity to repent for associating with the spirit of oppression. Lord, we repent for rejecting your word as being true and faithful. We repent for getting involved in gossip. We repent for self-exaltation. We repent for associating with familiar spirits. We repent for associating with any powers of darkness. Lord, we <clears throat> repent tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you'll wash us with your blood, and we take authority and we command that spirit of oppression to loose each and every one in this room, ourselves and all of our brothers and sisters. We rebuke you, spirit of oppression. You have been found. We curse your fruits and roots and seeds and command you to go in the name of Jesus, and we call forth the joy of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring his peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, and fill us that we may be one with you. Grant us those eyes and ears and heart and discernment to know 
when that spirit of oppression has come. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah.